Hey everyone, Happy New Year. I know it's March, but uh, I am very excited for 2024. As you can see, I'm in my new apartment, uh, all settled in here in London, and we are ready to kick back and uh, announce some new courses and initiatives for the community. As you all know, we are living in the age of AI and the landscape is evolving so rapidly. And uh, it can get a bit overwhelming if you're just starting out or if you're looking to, you know, scale your knowledge, try out different things. And um, when we talk about machine learning, when we talk about AI, the most crucial aspect of it, as you may have you know, heard or assume, is data. You know, you need data for training your machine learning models. You need to manage data. You need to clean the data. And also when we talk about uh, AI and machine learning, there are various um, you know, aspects of it. So there is, um, and when you first get started with machine learning, you learn about uh, unsupervised learning, you learn about supervised learning, reinforcement learning, so you know types of machine learning models, then you play around with a lot of algorithms, try to optimize your algorithms, you learn about deep learning in the future, and uh, the question arises that I get quite a lot is, Kunal, do you need to have a very strong understanding of uh, you know mathematics, for example, or how these algorithms work internally, and the ability to implement these from scratch, so on and so forth. The answer is both yes and no. It depends on what you want to do. If you're more into the research aspect of things, uh, then obviously, yeah, we'll cover that in a later you know course. And uh, the second answer is no, you don't. You don't have to know the deep mathematical equations and concepts in order to apply machine learning in your projects. So ideally, let's say you want to create a uh, web development project um, that filters out um, the requests that you're getting, if those are spam or not, you know, like email, for example, or you just want to build a movie classification model um, which uh, to which you just give a movie review and it can tell you whether the movie was good or bad or whatever. Uh, emotion detection, you give it a poem and it will give you back, uh, you know, the emotion behind the poem, whether it's a love poem, whether it's a funny poem, so on and so forth. So natural language processing as well. So in this video, I'm very excited to announce that uh, we're launching a new mini course to get your journey started in this domain. And my main motivation for this uh, series of videos is uh, to make um, the use of um, AI into your applications simpler and specifically focus on the data aspects because if you can get the data right then you know that's a very good step into further advancing your um, progression in AI and machine learning. So we're going to talk about data a lot in this series. So in this series we're going to be utilizing uh, single store DB. If you haven't already checked that out make sure you check out the links in the description below but um, we're going to talk a lot more about uh, what in this series, what it's about is um, generative AI and retrieval augmented generation. Now, Kunal, those are some very big words, right? You said this was going to get you started, but we don't know what these words mean. Not a problem. That is what this first video of the course is about. So in this video, we're going to learn about um, introduction to Gen AI. So what is Gen AI? and uh, the most important part of AI, which is I already mentioned, data. We're gonna learn about making AI apps that are data aware. We're gonna learn about what is RAG, which I just mentioned, retrieval augmented generation. So Kunal, big words, what even is it? And uh, we're gonna talk about some of the alternatives to these models and uh, why you would want to consider building a RAG application. Why are we even talking about it? Why not something else? And uh, as you know, um, you know, in every single video, like the ones that I've gotten millions of views on the channel, we have um, had um, some great feedback in terms of the intuition. So even though these are big, big concepts, I'll, to re I'll try to relate it to real world examples. And obviously we'll share the technical terms as well um, to get you started and build the intuition behind the concept concepts. So gonna be a lot of fun. All the links can be found in the description below if you have not already subscribed to the course to get updated about uh, new, new announcements. Make sure you do that, it's uh, you know, free to do so. And uh, let's get started. All right, so the first part of this video is the uh, introduction to Gen AI. You know, what is Gen AI? Why are we talking about it uh, you know, in the world of uh, artificial intelligence? So 
gen AI or you know generative AI, uh, if we first break it down into technical um, concepts, so technically speaking, gen AI refers to AI systems that possess the ability to understand and perform a wide range of tasks similar to how we human beings exhibit general intelligence. So unlike narrow AI, which excels at very specific tasks, like you can have, uh, you know, playing chess or a specific game or recognizing, you know, faces in your iPhone, you know, how that works. Um, so generative AI aims to tackle a diverse range of challenges with a single adaptable approach. So that's the technical definition, but that you can find online as well. But what does it mean in simpler terms? That's what we're here for. Let's think of it this way. So imagine that you're learning how to ride a bike. You know, most of us did. I, I, I have forgotten, by the way, how to ride a bike. Uh, this is something I realized right now when I was in Amsterdam. So I had not ridden a bike in 10 years. So apparently that is something you can forget. So anyway, let's think of this way. It, it, this way. You're learning how to ride a bike. And at, at first, it may feel like, uh, you know, a very daunting task when you're a kid. But as you practice and you gain experience, you start to develop a broader understanding of how to balance and steer your bike and do all the pedals and the stunts or whatever you want to do. Um, but soon enough, you're not just riding one type of bike, right? You can handle mountain bikes, you can handle road bikes, you can handle, uh, you know, some, some people, some of my friends, they also got a hang of unicycles and then you can also adapt to, you know, motorized bikes, so on and so forth. That is basically the essence of Gen AI. So the ability to learn and apply knowledge across different domains, just like we humans do. Now, let's bring it closer to home with some of the everyday examples. So think about your smartphone's virtual assistant. I have, um, you know, iPhone, I use Siri, you have Alexa, Google uh, has Google Assistant or whatever. Whether you're asking about, let's see, the weather forecast and you're setting reminders, adding stuff in your grocery list or you're playing your favorite music, it adapts to your needs seamlessly. That's because it is powered by Gen AI. So it is capable of understanding and responding to a wide range of commands and queries. So that's basically what Gen AI is in a nutshell like having a versatile uh, toolkit at your disposal, ready to tackle uh, whatever challenges come your way. And uh, whether it's navigating complex tasks or assisting with everyday routines, Gen AI opens a world of uh, possibilities. Okay, moving on to the most important part of AI. You guessed it, data, as I mentioned it already. So in the realm of AI, data is like, uh, you can say, lifeblood. Okay, it's the raw material that fuels our algorithms that uh, you know fuels the powers of our intelligent systems and your machine learning models and everything, right? But what do we mean by data? When we say data, what what do we mean? Now, what do you mean by data? Simply put, data actually refers to any information or observations that we can collect and analyze. So let's break it down with a nice real world example. Imagine you are a chef and you're creating a new recipe, okay? So what do you need to start cooking up uh, your recipe? You need obviously ingredients, right? That's what you need. Well, in the world of AI, the data is our ingredients. And just like, you know, a chef will select like uh, some of the freshest uh, produced and finest uh, spices and um, all the vegetables and everything, they also you know, all, all, always get the high quality ingredients so that the dish comes out to be nice Similarly, in the realm of AI, you, you select high quality data to train your AI models. Make sense? Now, the question is, Kunal, the chef gets the uh, groceries from the, rest, uh, from the you know, grocery store or whatever. Where does this data come from that we are going to use to, to create our machine learning models? Where does it come from? So the answer is it can come from various sources. Okay, it totally depends. Um, you can have websites that you can scrape, uh, sensors, social media, you name it. You know, data is um, everywhere. Think of it like uh, you're gathering ingredients from uh, not just one supermarket, but from various markets, like a big chain, then farmer's market, and then you make a very nice tasty dish. Okay, so basically with this example, the more diverse and abundant uh, our data, the richer and more flavorful our AI models can become. Now, here's the catch. Not 
all the data is created equal okay just like you wouldn't want to use uh, spoiled ingredients in your cooking we need to ensure that the data is clean relevant and reliable which is something i'm going to teach you in this course and the future courses on ai and machine learning so garbage in garbage out as they say uh, poor quality data can lead to inaccurate and unreliable ai predictions so sometimes you may have like outliers in data or something you have to account for those as well so when we do our uh, dedicated machine learning course which will be after this i'm going to teach you more more about that the last point i want to mention over here is the question that some of some of the people ask me is why data is so damn important mind my language in ai well let's put it this way imagine you're a detective who are solving a mystery the more clues and the more evidence you have the better are your chances to solve that mystery right so similarly in the case of ai the more data that we have the better our models can understand the patterns and make predictions and solve the problems so you can say that data is the cornerstone in artificial intelligence it powers everything from self driving cars to your voice assistants uh, to your personalized uh, recommendations and all sorts of things so as we continue our uh, ai adventure in this course always remember one thing when it comes to building intelligent systems it all starts with data that's actually a very nice ex post so you can tweet that and you can tag uh, this course and share it with your friends but uh, moving forward all right moving on when we talk about making ai apps that are data aware so from a technical standpoint a data aware ai application is uh, one that not only processes the data but also understands its context and relevance and uh, potential biases in the data so this involves uh, integrating advanced algorithms and techniques to interpret and utilize the data effectively leading to smarter and uh, more accurate ai systems think of it this way in the previous example we took a chef analogy so imagine that you're a chef who is creating a new recipe but you just don't throw away you know random ingredients together you carefully you know select each one based on the flavor profile of the ingredient the nutritious uh, value and how it complements the other ingredients so similarly a data aware ai application doesn't just analyze the data blindly but it understands the nuances of the data that it's working with and how it fits in the broader uh, context of your application and um, you know data aware ai applications they utilize techniques like uh, if it, if you dive a deep deeper into it something that we will be covering in the future videos as well so when we do talk about let's say data aware ai applications they utilizes uh, it, it utilizes techniques like uh, feature engineering where uh, relevant aspects of the data are identified and extracted to enhance the performance of the model so a good example of this can be you're making a machine learning model that uh, when you give it a few characteristics of a house like okay this house is on this street this house is on this floor of the building it has these many bedrooms this much square feet and this much closer to a train station or whatever please machine learning model give me an estimate of how much this house will cost so obviously in order to train that model you have to give it some already a existing prices of some of the houses and um, houses can have some of the features that are not really relevant in order to train the model so in simple terms features of the house that don't really affect the price of the house this can be something like uh, oh i don't know color of the walls because you can ch change that later on you get my point so feature engineering right and uh, they also employ the uh, methods like uh, when we talk about um, you know data aware applications uh, so methods like uh, data normalization and pre processing to ensure that the data is clean consistent and free from biases we're going to talk a lot about data and you know as i'm talking about it right now there are a lot of things that you need to do with it and that's where single store comes in so it's going to be pretty useful for us in order to make this process seamless when we're working with large amount of data you can you know terabytes and more than that if you want to do that right that as well so pretty amazing platform and uh, if we take an example of like a recommendation system so the ones used by streaming platforms uh, you know like netflix or whatever or websites like amazon when they are recommending you movies or products the ai doesn't just look at what you have just uh, you know seen you are exploring or purchased but 
It also considers other factors like your viewing history, your preferences, and even external factors like trending topics in the area or the seasonal trends. So by being data aware, the AI can offer personalized recommendations that are more likely to resonate with you. Additionally, another point is that the data aware AI applications often incorporate techniques like uh, data augmentation where uh, synthetic data is generated to supplement the existing data and uh, improve the model robustness. So they also implement uh, monitoring and feedback mechanisms to continuously learn from the new data and adopt the behavior over time. So we'll learn about it when we do, you know, if we do, let's say we do a facial recognition project in the future. So let's say you're training a facial recognition system for security purposes. So by augmenting the data set with various uh, conditions in lightning, for example, facial expressions and backgrounds, the AI becomes more uh, resilient to real world conditions and less prone to errors. That's a real world example of what I meant. So it's like giving AI a wider range of experiences to learn from and making it more uh, adept to recognizing faces in uh, different scenarios. So overall, I would say that making AI applications that are data aware is all about understanding the data, its context, and how it can be leveraged to build smarter, more reliable AI systems. And by incorporating these principles into our uh, AI development process, we can unlock, you know, pretty much, um, the, the, this is like the foundation when I talk about efficiency, accuracy, and, in, in, and innovation. And it all starts with data. So, yeah, pretty important. We're going to talk about data a lot, and I, I assure you, you're going to learn something new in every single step. But, uh, yeah, that's basically about it. All right, now let's talk about the next um, most important thing in this course that we're going to be doing is uh, RAG. So, at it score, RAG combines uh, two powerful AI techniques, retrieval-based methods and generative models. Now, that's a mouthful. I understand, you know, if this is something you're hearing for the first time, don't worry. Let's break it down. I travel a lot, right? So, when I visit a new city, I want uh, recommendations for the best restaurants and the attractions and the activities around it. So, traditionally, you might search online and, like, uh, shift through countless of like reviews on Google or TripAdvisor, whatever you want to, you know, call, you want to search for ideally. And that's uh, basically like retrieval based methods. So they fetch relevant information from a vast pool of data. Okay. And when we sprinkle some of the Gen AI magic into this, what happens is that instead of just providing you with existing recommendations, RAG does it, it takes it a step further. So it can generate personalized suggestions tailored to your preferences and interests. It's like having a knowledgeable local guide who not only shares the uh, you know, popular spots, but also customizes the recommendations based on your tastes. So far, you know, I, I just use my friends in that city. They know me best. So it's sort of like that, you know. <laughs> but why is RAG so powerful? Why are we talking about that? In, in traditional search engines, think about this, in traditional search engines, you are limited to the information that is available on the indexed web pages. Okay, we all know how search engines work. If you don't, make sure you check out my networking uh, video. It's pretty long, four hours long, so it should give you a basic understanding. But uh, with RAG, you can leverage both the existing knowledge and also generate new insights on the fly. So it's like having access to an endless uh, repository of your information that evolves and adapts uh, according to your needs. That is basically what RAG is in a nutshell. Obviously, we'll be doing a lot more hands-on stuff in the future of this video. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe and uh, for the tools and everything, code samples, check out the links in the description below. But yeah, it's a game changer in the field of AI. It combines the best of retrieval and uh, generative techniques to provide personalized and insightful uh, experiences. And um, yeah, next time you are using an application, ideally, if you you know, I need tailored recommendations. Just remember the magic of uh, RAG behind it. All right, cool. Kunal, that was fine. But uh, why RAG? Are there any like uh, alternatives to RAG? Obviously, there's an alternative to everything in the world. Well, most things. And uh, we'll cover, you know, various uh, other models in the future. But one alternative worth considering is uh, leveraging transformer-based language models like GPT. So generative pre-trained transformer 
and unlike RAG which combines of retrieval and generation, GPT focuses us only on the generation but offers uh, impressive capabilities in understanding and producing human-like text. So you can have like uh, fine-tuned uh, GPT models on specific tasks or domains and uh, using, uh, you know, uh, there's this new term now, uh, prompt engineering, okay? So researchers and developers can achieve uh, pretty much remarkable results without the need for explicit retrieval mechanisms. And additionally, advancements in transfer learning and model architectures continually uh, you know, expand the possibilities of GPT and similar models, basically making them, um, you can say, versatile alternatives to RAG for various applications. But in the end, I would just say it depends on you know, what you need. Um, the benefits that RAG provides are quite a lot that we just discussed, and you will see those more in the future tutorials. But if you're getting on this path, then obviously you have to have, a, have an understanding of various models so that you can best pick the one that fits best for your use case and the type of data that you have. Okay, Kunal, so we're gonna build RAG-based uh, applications. So what are some of the things that we need? What are some, th some of the things we're gonna learn in this course and in the future you know, machine learning boot camps as well? So, we all of already mentioned, you know, uh, we're gonna use retrieval and generative, um, you know, models to create uh, intelligent, uh, context-aware applications. Uh, you need some 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 initial uh, things. Um, going back to our cook example, initial ingredients. Uh, first and foremost, you require a solid understanding um, of uh, natural language processing concepts. And uh, this includes like familiarity with the uh, retrieval models, uh, which retrieve relevant information from, let's say, a vast knowledge base, and uh, generation models, which produce uh, coherent and contextually uh, relevant responses. Additionally, a bit of uh, proficiency in uh, machine learning frameworks, like uh, you can use uh, you know, TensorFlow, you can use uh, PyTorch. Um, this would be helpful when you're uh, implementing and fine tuning these models. Equally important is also the access to extensive data sets because you're gonna be needing to train your uh, models and ensuring that they understand a wide range of topics and contexts. So when we work with data, we're gonna utilize single store. And if you wanna learn more about it, get some hands-on experience. By the way, they do a lot of uh, amazing hands-on live webinars and code sharing sessions. So go check out uh, single store, uh, the website, the link can be found in the description below and go to their webinar page tons of amazing free content over there. Right, and uh, furthermore, uh, because we're gonna be building applications, so little bit of experience in software development and programming languages. If you know Python, amazing, that would make things easier. If not, don't worry. It's, uh, I'll try to make the course as simple to understand as, poly as possible and to follow along as well. And I'll share with you the course material also, uh, upload it on GitHub. So, the, the reason I say that is because when you know software development a bit, so even though you have your machine learning model trained, you will be able to deploy it on a website and share it with your friends in a user-friendly app interface. Lastly, um, I wanna mention that a creative mindset and a passion for innovation. And uh, you know it's gonna drive you to explore new possibilities and push the boundaries of what can be achieved with RAG-based applications. So those are some of the things you need. Um, you're gonna be well equipped to embark on this exciting journey of our course and series, whatever you wanna call it. But uh, we're gonna be building our own RAG-based applications. So lastly, I just wanna share that learning by doing is the best way to learn. That's what we're gonna focus this uh, series and the future videos on as well. Speaking of learn by doing and the tools we're gonna use, let's talk a little bit more about why Single Store, what it's all about and um, what it has to offer. So I don't know if you know this, but single store previously was known as a MemSQL. And it's like the, we talk about database, it's like a Swiss army knife, okay? So it has a lot of, uh, you know, capabilities for both the transactional and your analytic needs. So when when we look at products like this, we, we see some of the real world case studies, right? Um, single store, when we talk about it, it's uh, trusted by, a lot of big companies that you can see on their website, like Siemens, Comcast, and Hulu, uh, for its ability to handle real-time analytics, and also the power of cutting-edge 
Gen AI applications using RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. So I would say, picture this, you're like uh, crunching numbers for an in-app analytics or diving into, I don't know, terabyte, no, terabyte is small, uh, petabytes of uh, scale for your SQL aggregations. With all of those uh, needs in mind, Single Store has your back. And uh, if we talk about RAG, it's not just riding the hype train, you know, because it's very easy to get lost in the hype cycle because Single Store has been rocking uh, vectors and semantic search since 2017. It's not um, something that they just caught on it because now everyone is talking about AI. No, they have been at it since 2017. But here's the kicker. It doesn't just stop there. Single Store also lets you play uh, you know, mix and match with your data like SQL, JSON, you name it and even pulls off, uh, uh, for example, hybrid searches and uh, combining uh, keyword matches with vector-based semantics um, and it does all of this in milliseconds. So we can learn about vector databases and all these other things in the future videos in this uh, series itself and, um, you know, we we'll talk about what it's, um, real-time uh, multimodal AI. Yeah, it's not just a dream anymore. I think uh, Single Store has uh, made it a reality. And uh, more information can be found on the website. Uh, as I mentioned, I gave them a shout out in terms of the amazing webinars they do, because I am a big fan of learning by doing, exploring a tool by doing hands-on sessions and webinars. So yeah, I explore their page, their documentation, blogs, webinars, but uh, we'll be utilizing it uh, hands-on in this series and in the future ones as well. So, yeah, very excited and check out the links in the description below. That's it for this video. We covered a lot of things. Um, I tried to break down bigger concepts into smaller ones. So I hope it was easy to understand. In the next videos, we're going to get a little bit more hands-on. We're going to learn about um, vector databases in the next video. So I'm very excited about that. And um, yeah, check out the links in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, you can also take a you know, screenshot of this video and uh, learn in public so you can share what you learned, write a blog or you can check out Single Store and, uh, you know, try it out, share what you think on social media, tag them, tag me, or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to tag me as well, happy to answer. Lastly, if you have any suggestions or any specific use cases you'd like to see in future videos or some specific projects, specific questions to, you know, answers to some, some of your questions, yeah, so let me know in the comment section below and um, I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.